Hello everyone, uh, my name is Chai Bex and in this video we are going to be taking a look at how to build bases for No Man's Sky using Blender. Uh, I've wanted to do this video for a little while now. Um, I'm designing this video to be a bit of an end-to-end -end process of basically everything. So downloading Blender, downloading all the sort of various tools that you need for this process then I'll be showing you my exact workflow uh, of how to create a base in Blender and then get it imported into No Man's Sky. Um, so I'm doing this now because obviously with the, the coronavirus, um, a lot of people are finding themselves indoors. Um, they might be wanting to learn something new um, and so it's, it's kind of a perfect opportunity to distract yourself uh, and pick up a new skill set. And I've been told uh, numerous times that the tool that I wrote for, for Blender is actually quite a nice way of getting started with Blender itself. Um, so if you need, to, if you if you like No Man's Sky and you're interested in 3D, um, then this video might be for you. Um, so I have my computer set up here, uh, and we can get started with the process. So we need a few things first. Um, the first is obviously Blender. Now there's two ways of actually getting Blender now. Uh, you can go on the Blender website, so it's www.blender.org. Um, I will post all of these links that I'm going to mention in the description of this video. Um, and the current version that we're at is Blender 2.82a. Uh, and you can click on download here. Uh, and then depending on what system you're on, you'll have the options here. Um, so the, the plugin that I have is, is compatible with 2.8. Blender used to be on a version 2.79 for a very long time before they made this big shift to 2.8. And it very much modernizes the whole experience. But um, So that's one way of getting the tool, getting Blender. Um, but the way that I've done it is through Steam. So you can actually get Blender through Steam now. Uh, and the reason I do that is because you'll pick up updates automatically, just like how you get updates for your the games that you play. Uh, if you get it through the website, then uh, you'll have to manually download it every time you get uh, they release an update. So if we um, load up Steam, click on the store. Uh, I've already got it open up here, but you can simply just type in Blender and it'll be the first option in the list. Uh, oh, actually, it's just, just loaded the home page. Let's go to Blender. And then if you scroll down, uh, it's a completely free program. So even on the blender.org and through Steam, completely free. So um, again, it's quite a good way to get interested, to get started with 3D if you're interested in it. So you just click on free. Um, obviously, I already, I already have it downloaded, so it's just gonna load up Blender for me. But if you don't have it, it will download it for you. <clears throat> so that's Blender. Uh, and we need uh, basically two other tools. So the first is the No Man's Sky Save Editor by uh, Goat Fungus. Um, he keeps this tool up to date, and if you actually if you have this already, then um, it has its own sort of update process. If you open the the tool, it will actually check for updates for you. But if you don't, you can take you can get it from No Man's Sky Mods .com, um, and then you just, uh, you might need, oh, I don't know actually. So you'll see the download link on the right here. You might need an account or you might not, I'm not sure. Oh no, clearly not. So yeah, you'll just uh, download the XE for you there. Now I already have these installed, so I'm not gonna go through this entire process. Um, I'm sure it's simple enough for you to understand how to install these programs. So let's, uh, well, let's just get rid of that. Um, and then the next thing is, um, well, actually, let me just let me just explain why we need the the, the save editor first. So, the the save editor is um, basically a tool that lets you access the data within your save file, um, as sort of you could probably understand by the name of the tool. But um, it's usually used for it's, it's a bit like cheating really. So you can give yourself new items, uh, you can add currency to your character. Um, personally, I don't think I've ever done that, but I I use this tool to basically access um, your base data. So all of the bases that you build within the game are gonna be stored inside your save file. So we're using that data and we're gonna be using it for Blender later on. 
So the next thing we need is the plugin that I developed, which is the No Man's Sky Base Builder plugin for Blender. And we get that from nexusmods.com, No Man's Sky, um, and it's the number 984. Again, I'll put a link in the description. Now what we want to do is scroll down, go to the Files tab, and then we go to, uh, so it's this, this top one here, so it's this section, No Man's Sky Base Builder, and we got to go to Manual Download. Uh, now this is just a warning to tell you that you need these two items first, so we've already gone through this, so we have Blender, we have this, uh, the No Man's Sky Save Editor, then you want to click Download. Um, so from here, depending on if you're a subscriber to Nexus Mods, you can choose either a slow or fast download. We'll just click slow for now. And then, so it's a very small file, it will download it probably within a second. Um, and then what we want to do is probably just take that out and bring it to the desktop. You don't have to open this, you don't have to do anything with this file. The zip file is good enough. Uh, so let's close, well, we, could, we can now minimize this. I've got OBS open here. Uh, and from here, we just want to open up Blender. So let's go to Steam, load up Blender. And you'll be presented. So I actually have it loaded here, but let's just pretend we haven't. So when you first load up Blender, you'll probably have like something that looks a bit like this. You'll have an either an empty scene or you might have like just a simple cube and a little light in there. Um, this is just the default scene that Blender gives you. So from here, uh, we want to go to Edit, Preferences, and then we go to Install. So at the top right, we have the Install button here. And then what we want to do is basically find that zip file that we downloaded. So we have it here. Once you have that selected, just go click Install Add-on. Again, I've already done this, so I'm not just going to do this now. Um, and then hopefully you'll have an, a new entry um, labeled Game Engine No Man's Sky Base Builder. Um, I've labeled it Game Engine, even though the tool isn't really a game engine, but it kind of felt like it most fit in that category. Um, if we open this up, you'll see just a few details. You've got the path to the plugin itself. Uh, the location where it's at and the version number, just things like that. Not really necessary to know, but it um, might be useful for you uh, in whatever situation. So, once it's loaded, you might not see anything different, and that's because with Blender 2.8, um, we've actually had to hide this panel away and we have to have to kind of activate it. So, in order to activate it, you see this little arrow on the right here, if you just click on that that's going to pop out this little panel. Now, by default, it probably has Tool or View selected, uh, but you'll notice that there's a No Man's Sky tab here as well. So if we click on this, this will bring you up here, and all of these little panels will probably be open by default, so let's just do that. Um, and so from here, I'll just give you a bit of a rundown as to what various options we have in this panel. We'll be using this throughout this sort of process that I'm doing. Um, so this will just be a very quick summary of what we have. So at the top, we have the file management. Uh, so this is how you can create a new scene. You can save scenes to a what we call a JSON file. So that's just the format that we say our base is in. Uh, we can load those, for, uh, those JSON files. And we also have the processes for basically importing and exporting to the save editor. So, uh, let's take a little drink. <clears throat> so, moving on, we have the uh, properties. So this is, you don't need to edit this, this will uh, basically display properties of the base that you're currently editing. So, the base name and the galactic address. Below that, we have tools for basically switching uh, visibility modes, uh, we can duplicate objects around the scene, we've got some uh, sort of utility functions for curves, um, and we have a delete for, uh, button for just like completely blowing away uh, stuff that we have in the scene. Um, the part count, this tells you how many parts are in your 
in your base, this is quite useful to know because the the upload limit for the No Man's Sky server is currently 3,000 parts. So if you go over 3,000 parts in your base, uh, you can't upload that to the servers. And then we have the snapping features, which are um, it's useful for basically building large panels of walls, or um, it basically mimics the snapping features that you have already in the game. Um, but I'll be going into that in a bit more detail later on. Um, moving on, we have the color options. Um, again, I'll, I'll go through that later on. The same for the power and logic. And then below that, we have the uh, build panel. So this build panel is basically going to be open at all times, and that's because uh, this is basically where we access all of the, uh, the items that we have for No Man's Sky. So if you are just start clicking things, um, this is just going to start building stuff, um, placing them in the scene, and this is how we're going to manipulate them. Alrighty, so that that's a, a sort of a very quick overview. Um, what I'll also do, um, I won't go through it in the video because there's loads of other videos that go through this. Um, but I will put in the description basically all of the sort of hotkeys that I'm using. So being able to pan around the camera, um, being able to zoom in and out. Um, it's stuff that's explained in other videos, but it's quite useful to know. It's like a sort of a cheat sheet on how to use Blender. You also have these little things at the bottom here that give you tool tips as to what you can currently do in your active tools. So um, yeah, hopefully it'll be enough to kind of get you started just um, being familiar and getting comfortable with Blender. All right, so now we're gonna start actually building something. So um, usually what I do is find a a reference. So usually I'll go and Google, I'll type in, um, you know, sci-fi concept art or something like that, or a giant monolith or that sort of thing. Um, but there is an account that I go to which I use, um, like an Instagram account, that I use for just small kind of little ideas, uh, and it's called Polygon Runway. And this is a this is another Blender artist who basically specialises in little bite size. Um, environments so um, usually it's just a little cube or a little square where they just place some things down it's usually quite a nice style that I like so um, this is a this is the same artist that I used for um, a while ago I made, I made this sort of taco shop build um, which had a little spaceship little spaceport um, and it was flying in the air so this is the same artist that kind of came up with that idea um, so I like just scrolling through here and, until I see something quite nice. Um, and in this example, I'll probably just go ahead and choose this one. So I quite like the this um, this sort of lighthouse design. Uh, it's got a tower and the house, and I think this is stuff that we can quite easily recreate in No Man's Sky um, for the purpose of this video as well. Uh, so what I'll probably do is pin this to the sort of corner of this video so we can kind of see this at the same time whilst I'm building. Um, now as I'm going to go ahead and build, um, so what I'll probably do is I'll leave this video running for about a, um, probably about an hour or so. Um, I might speed it up if things get a bit boring or I might just put some, some music over the top. Um, but what I'll do is, as I'm working, I'll start talking about particular things I'm doing uh, that are particular to my workflow, or if there's anything about the tool that I think is interesting that you can potentially use for yourself. And that way you can see live uh, and sort of firsthand what I'm actually doing um, when building these bases. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get started. So I'll have the design pinned and then we'll start. So. We're currently at about 15 minutes, so it'll be about 45 minutes of building. So, um, what I think I'm going to do, so I'm going to try and start off with, with something that makes a bit of sense. So, um, okay, so I'm going to start off with that house. The house seems quite simple, so I think it would be quite a good way to start. So, 
Uh, the good thing about this this um, parts list is that it has a search bar at the bottom. Uh, if you can't see that, it's probably because it's collapsed. There's this tiny little arrow here if we click on this. Oh, actually, no. So that's... <laughs> okay, so I don't know my own tool. So um, I made it so like by default this is expanded, so you should be able to see the search bar. And I've actually locked it, so you can't actually collapse it. So, yeah, forget I said anything. Um, so let's just um, start typing in things. You can type in wall, and it will show up with all the wall items. Um, if you don't have a search term, it will just be the default list, and then things are categorized into their different sections. So sometimes it's quite good just to kind of look through like this, because the categories are quite meaningful. Um, but if you know like a very particular part that you want to use, then it's quite good to use the, uh, the search bar. So let's use a wall. And then in this case, <clears throat> I probably just want to build a wooden wall. So um, maybe let's just add a, a window to it as well. So let's just start building up like the four sort of sided wall for the building. So let's find wooden wall. And then, yeah, so I basically want to build a sort of square. So let's create another one. Now, what's happened here is um, if I create an item through the list and then I create another item through the list, in that process it's going to try and find a sort of snapping relationship between the two. So in this case, because I've used the same item, it's more than likely that there's going to be a snapping relationship. And what it does is it basically just finds like the first snapping point in a list and then uses that as the association. So uh, to give you an example, um, let's go down to the tools and go to the snap box. So I mentioned I was going to explain this, and it's a good chance to explain it now. So if I just had two items um, in the scene like this, let's just move it out. If I select this one and I select this one, I can press snap, and it will bring it back to where it was. So that behavior is actually running when you create new objects. Um, but what if I'm not happy with this position, right? So I want to make it so it goes around to this other side. So when I do that selection, so if I select this, this basically makes this the source object. And then when I select another item, it makes it the target object. And that's where this labeling comes in handy. So if we're going to snap the source, then it means that the the source point of the snap is going to basically rotate around the available items that are the available snap points that I have there. So it's better probably to uh, to kind of show you. So if I start uh, snapping the the target, so let's just snap it, and I start cycling through the target, the snap points on the target object are cycling around. So I can just keep on pressing this, and you can see that it's kind of going around in a circle, so um, it's kind of going back to where it was. Uh, but yeah, I usually do this until I find what I'm looking for. So this is what I want. Uh, and to show you what happens if I cycle the source one, it's basically going to stay in the same location, but the actual source object itself is going to start rotating around. And that's because that's the available snap points for that object as well. So yeah, so usually you can get quite a good sort of structure just by like kind of duplicating and snapping around at the various points. So let's just finish that off uh, with this four-sided thing. Cool. So um, what I might do now is actually swap out one of these with a window one. So. Let's take this and make it. Uh, da, 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 da. Can find it. Wood door window. Wood window. Let's search for it. So let's do. Um, wood wall window. Okay, that'll do. So let's um, cycle the source position because it's not quite what we want it to be. And that's exactly what it wanted to be. So that's there. And then let's just add like a door that's like, sort of similar on the side. So in this case, I'll kind of make it sort of 
more No Man's Sky-ish, so let's just make it a futuristic door. Like a sci-fi door. So this is the door object that has that sort of blue glowing effect that comes out of the entry. Um, cool, and now let's, let's start on the roof. is the diagonal object. Okay. Yeah, so so the roof um so the roof is kind of this sort of triangular thing that sits on top of the the uh the wooden part. And there isn't actually there isn't anything in Nomad Sky that does that by default. So we're gonna do something a little tricky. So um what I do know is that there is this wooden diagonal wall. And let's bring that the top, but obviously that's um, that's not quite what we want because it's it's kind of one side of that triangle and it covers the entire distance. So we kind of have two options here. The first is we can sort of extend this out, and then we can do something a little bit like that. Um, but the truth is, I I was kind of happy with the scale that we already had. This kind of sort of size. So another option we can do is basically play around with the scale. So at this point we can basically, um, so so far I think I've probably just been sort of moving things around like this. But on the left side here we basically have the different Blender sort of manipulators. So there's move, rotate and scale. So scale is what we want in this case. Uh, and you'll notice that the little handles kind of update based on what, you, what you've got selected. So in the scale, we basically want to try and find this white ring. If we click and drag that, that's going to scale um, the whole thing. If we select one of those individual channels, it's only going to scale them in sort of one direction. Now, uh, when it comes to No Man's Sky, we want to make sure that every object is basically a uniform scale. And when I say uniform scale, that means that every, the basically the value that represents the scale of each of those three components needs to be exactly the same. So on the right here, you'll have this sort of orange uh, square. Um, these are basically tabs that give you different options. So if we click on the orange square, this will give you the, what we call the transformation data of that object. So here we have like the location of that object, so where, where it is sort of um, yeah, its position of it. And then we have this sort of orientation, the rotation of it. And then we have this scale value here. So if we start changing this, we'll start seeing those values of the scale updating as well. Now in this case, I, I kind of know what size I want it to be, because so basically we just want it to be half the size. So we know that a half is 0 0.5. Let's just make 0 0.5 each of those. So you can basically select and type in your own uh, numbers there in order to basically update the object in the scene. Um, so what we can do is select it and then we can go back to the move tool and we can bring it back over to this side. And let's just kind of adjust it so it sits a bit better on the actual house. So now I've just duplicated it across kind of fit it automatically on the other side and one of the nice things about this duplicate button here as well and the snapping feature is that the new object will retain the same size uh, or the same scale that you set on that other object so you'll notice that this isn't 111 it's still 0.5 uh, across the whole board so let's select those and we basically want to do the same on the other side now we could go through that whole process again but actually um, in this case, what we can do is basically use the duplicate hotkey that Blender provides. So all that is is uh, Shift D. So when you press Shift D, it's going to activate the duplicate tool. Um, now the thing is, if you move the mouse around, it's going to sort of attach to the mouse, and you have to kind of click in order to release it. So usually what I do is do Shift D, and then I click straight away in order to get that into place, and then I'll just uh, translate it across to where I need it to go. Uh, another useful hotkey to know is the period key, or the, the sort of full stop on the number pad. If you select that, that's going to focus uh, on an object in the viewport. OK, 
Okay, so um, the shape of the roof is pretty much there, so now I'm just going to sort of add um, the kind of tiling effect. Um, so what, what, well, what I might do is just check to see if the roof object actually kind of gives us what we want. So let's go uh, say roof. And we want to find the wooden roof ramp, I think. So wood roof ramp. Okay, it's not quite snapped it to where I want it to go, but we can rotate it round. Oops. So yeah, you can you always feel free to basically type in your own values here if you know exactly what it's going to be. So in this case, if you just do zero, it's going to bring it back to where we kind of want it to go. And that's actually kind of quite close to what I want it to look like. Um, I mean, this is quite a precise tiling. It's not quite as um, higgledy-piggledy as it is in the, the picture. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to kind of go ahead with this. So position this, and then we can duplicate that across to the other side. And then we can do the same on the other side. Now again, I'm, I'm going to basically do a shift D duplicate on this because we already have the object here. Um, but in this case, I'm going to have to rotate it around. So what we can do uh, in order to be sort of quite precise is you might have noticed this little handle moving around up here. This is basically an indication of what kind of angle you're looking at the world in. And we can actually click and drag this to move things around as well. But what we can do is click on the, these axes themselves, and that will basically switch the camera to something called an orthographic view. Um, orthographic basically means that you don't get perspective. So. Currently, if you have like an object that's super far away, then that's obviously going to get smaller as it goes into the distance. Um, but switching to an orthographic view basically flattens everything so that you can basically see everything at the right scale. Um, kind of almost like a bird's eye view, but depending on the angle that you're looking at. So in this case, well in this case I do want a bird's eye, uh, a bird's eye view, so let's go to the top. So this clicking on the Z. So we get a very precise view of what we're looking at, kind of like a blueprint. And if we could do Shift D again, so we duplicate that and then we bring it down. Now, if we look at it, obviously it doesn't doesn't quite look like what we want. So let's go back to the top, switch over to the Rotate tool, and then we can select either this blue blue circle or the white circle. It doesn't really matter. And then we select it and then we move it around. Now I I don't really Whenever I do this sort of thing, I, I don't really mind being completely exact as long as it kind of looks fine then to your eye, then it, it's kind of good for me. Um, so yeah, so that's, we kind of have the sort of base shape of our house. Um, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, if I'm getting a bit too quiet, then I will, uh, I might speed up and play some music over the top. So um, I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick here. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so in this 
in this situation I'm trying to replicate this kind of um, cylindrical tiling that you see on the top of this house. Um, now I could use the duplicate tool but that's going to kind of snap it into a place I quite no, I don't really want because I want it to sort of slide along the top. Um, so Blender has some sort of useful things to know. Um, so currently I'm working in uh, the many plates that we're using, so the translate, the rotate and the scale, are all acting uh, relative to the global space. And when I, when I say global space, it means the sort of um, the area that your building is in. This will become a bit clearer when I explain more. So you can see the global option up here. This is because it's, it's set to the global space. So if I switch it to local, this means that the tool, like the translation tool, basically reorients itself to the space of the object. So the current rotation of the object, if I start uh, translating that, then it's going to sort of go along at a bit of an angle. And that's because that's the current rotation of the object. So switching it to global just gives me reassurance that if I translate it across, then it's going to stay in line with how I want it to go. Um, so in this case, what I want to do is, is select these two things. And I basically want to repeat that across here. So what I tend to do in these situations, I mean, it's it's kind of obvious when, uh, you know, it's not really much of a trick, it's kind of obvious. Uh, if I do shift D, click it in place, and then just grab that handle and move it across. And then what I'll do is basically reselect the two items that we had and then do the same. So this is good if you, instead of having like one object and you go duplicate, 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 um, this just lets you kind of do it in a bit of a faster way, um, sort of exponentially. And this is kind of overshooting, so I'll just delete that. Um, okay, so. Uh, I'm kind of happy, like I'm not going to go too too crazy with this design, so um, let's start colouring it in. So, um, kind of two main colours going on at the moment, so it's red on the top, sort of a well darkish orangey colour, and then a sort of beige colour for the walls. So let's go ahead and just select the walls. Um, and it's these triangular bits as well. And if we open up colour, um, let's just keep it as a sort of concrete colour uh, and then the closest colour to this is probably just a, an orangey colour here and then let's go ahead and select these guys and we want to make those red okay let's select those, see that kind of looks it might just be the lighting of the design, but I, I want to guess that this is just the same colour as the orangey beige. So let's select those and <coughs> make that orange. Um, so another little trick that I tend to use. So in this case, I sort of just went select, 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 select. But um, you can actually drag select like this. But sometimes you might start grabbing items that you don't necessarily want. So in that example, I just went ahead and selected this, but this also grabbed the wall and parts of the roof. So you can activate that drag selection manually by pressing B. This brings up this little cursor here, and you can just start like dragging stuff like that. Um, now this is quite good if you want to basically add to the selection. So in this case, if you're dragging, then it's going to deselect and select the new items. But if you press B, it will add to that selection. So you'll notice that the previous selection was still highlighted. Pressing B will kind of add to that selection. Now, doing this, but then also holding down Shift will deselect. So if we select something like this, but we don't want these items, we can basically just kind of select around that whilst um, pressing Shift. And we can do that. Okay, so that we've made sure that that is our only selection. Okay, so yeah, we made this orange, that's fine. Um, and let's say that we're, we're happy with this design, so if I want to kind of move on to, the, to a, another object, so like the lighthouse or, or the tree or whatever, but I don't really want to kind of do it within the same scene, 
I can start saving things as a preset. So what a preset does is um, basically it lets you tag a series of objects as something descriptive. So in this case, we've used a bunch of items. It doesn't really matter what they are, um, but we can clearly see that this is like a hut or a house. Um, so we can basically tag this as a hut or a house. So in order to do that, we can say, let's move over to preset. Um, and what it's gonna do is basically act upon whatever is in your scene. So it could be something super complex, it could be something super small. Um, it's gonna act on all of those items. So if we do save this preset and we go lighthouse. Uh, this You can call this anything, by the way. I'm just kind of using this as a way to you know, be easy to, to remember. So let's do lighthouse and let's call it uh, hut. So lighthouse underscore hut and press OK. So that's basically saved this as um, something that we can recreate. So what it does is, so once you press OK on that, that little dialog, it's refreshed this list. And now we have lighthouse hut um, within this list. And if we click on that, it's basically just going to rebuild what we already had. And we can build as many as we want. We can, you know, click it a few times. We can build a little sort of hut city um, using this feature. Um, and you can translate, you can rotate, you can scale that however way you want, and that's going to be absolutely fine for No Man's Sky to read. Um, so that just kind of explains what the preset is for. Um, let's just go ahead and delete those. Um, now the other thing that's quite useful is that it's good for kind of saving stuff. Um, and then, like, say you're kind of happy with it, but then later on, you kind of missed something or you wanted to change something, then it's quite good for doing that as well. So for example, if we just kind of get rid of it, we can click on edit on the lighthouse hut and it will basically reconstruct everything, even with the colors uh, for you. Um, later on, we'll see a bit more how useful that can be, um, but that's the general gist of it. So let's say we're done with the house. Let's move on to the lighthouse. Okay, I'm going to show you another little trick that I tend to do. So um, here we have, so I'm, I'm kind of forming the the base of this tower for the lighthouse. Um, and this is what I kind of want to use because um, as you can see in the picture, they're kind of like poly polygonal sort of style slanted wall, uh, like a slanted cylinder that's kind of going up. So I'm going to use these wedge pieces as those edges. Um, but I basically want to form the cylinder. So what we can do is go back to this orthographic view that I was mentioning earlier, so the top-down view. And then if we select that, now what I've done is I've built um, basically two sets, one on both sides, kind of facing each other. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because when I select them, um, the central pivot for all of that is going to be an equal distance between the two. Uh, for example, if I just selected the top half, then the pivot is going to be here, and if I start rotating that around, it's not going to be quite what I wanted. So if I select 
both of them, you've got the central pivot, and then we go back to our, this, this sort of duplicate thing. So if we do Shift D, and then we click it into place, we can start rotating that round, and then we want to basically want to do it so that the um, the edge of the wedge on one side is going to match the one, the previous one on the other side. So a little bit like that. And then we're going to keep going round until we form our cylinder. So it's not it's not going to be quite exact, um, but that's you know for the purpose of this video. Like usually when I do these builds, I spend a little bit more time to sort of finesse things. But for now, this is absolutely fine for demonstration purposes. So let's uh, let's carry on and I'll I'll build the top section. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is show you, so there's a, there's a part that I quite like, which is called the ceiling light. Um, basically this, this part is designed to sort of stick on the ceiling, uh, and No Man's Sky kind of restricts you from placing it anywhere else. But what I quite like to do with this is to make it behave, instead of, instead of like a light, but more like a bit like a railing, or a, like a seat sometimes. Um, so to give you, an, give you an idea of what that looks like, um, you can place this here, pull this out, and this kind of forms the sort of cylindrical railing that we can see on the lighthouse. Uh, let's make that a tad bigger. I'll go back to orthographic view. Okay. Now the other thing is it kind of has more spindles or more kind of support poles than what it currently has here. So two things we can do here. So if I duplicate this um, and then just rotate it around, that kind of already gives me what I want. Um, the problem with this is that the objects will be overlapping and sometimes you get sort of um, graphical glitches when that happens in the game. Um, so what I can do is just offset that to be a little bit down like that, but that kind of, I feel like now that's a bit too thick for what I want. So the other option I can do is, and this is actually another thing that's worth knowing in the tool, uh, in, the, the, in the Blender tool, is there are some items in the game that are considered uh, what, what we call them legacy items. So these are items that were found in the game in previous patches, but now for some like for whatever reason, they're no longer built in the game. Um, so there are a few legacy items and they're actually listed under something under the legacy category. Um, if you're familiar with the game uh, from like years ago, I guess, you might recognize these items. And I think if you actually look at the uh, Pathfinder trailer, um, as it kind of steps through that trailer, you'll start. You'll see some of these items in the game. <coughs> um, so the reason why I was saying that is because there's a particular item that I use quite a lot, which is called the corner post, and this is basically just a very simple cylinder, um, a little bit like a pipe, I guess, but it's it's more kind of decorative. So what I tend to do is I scale that down and I kind of match it to, to the other poles that are um, working on this sort of ceiling light object. And obviously it's not high enough, 
So what I can do is just duplicate and then bring that up. And uh, let's just scale it up so it matches the height of the light. So we can do that. And then what I'll do is I'll just switch to off graphic view and I'll duplicate that and bring that around to each side. Okay, cool. So I think that'll be enough. Um, there's also another one at the top here, so I might just do that up here as well. So let's scale that up slightly. Um, oh, actually, it's quite, it's quite a lot wider, so let's go here. Oh, actually, now it's coming out here, so let's do that. Okay, and then let's duplicate the ceiling light again, bring it up shrink it down and then we have our second railing I'm not going to bother with the these other things here I think that's probably fine okay and okay for the doorway so the doorway is kind of it's kind of slotted into the structure itself so I'm kind of going to do a cheat and make it so it kind of sticks out instead um, so let's do Okay, another thing I've noticed here is, so the colour on the house, I've stuck that with the concrete material, but I've noticed that in the tower, um, there's kind of a mix of things going on. So we've got this sort of concrete um, base, but then I think it looks like it's wood for the, for the top bit. So what I'll do is switch over to wood for the, um, the sort of top section and also probably the doorway as well. So the way that we do that, so when we're tagging materials, is just we switch over to the different tab, um, and then we do it as before, we just select what color we want it to be. Um, unfortunately, there's no kind of indication as to what material you're using. Um, it's just a color indication, which looks the same for each material you're using. So not quite as, as useful as I'd like it to be, but um, yeah, that's just the way it is. So let's make them wood, I suppose orange is the closest colour again, so let's just do that. Uh, let's do a box selection and then we can deselect um, the stuff we don't want. And then let's switch that over to orange. And I missed that one there, so let's do that. Okay, and it looks like it's red on the top. Actually, I have noticed as well. So what I might do is do another duplicate of this. So you can see there's kind of like this, um, um, how can I do that? So there's like this sort of grid pattern that's on the top section. So let's try and tackle that. So let's scale this down. I have a feeling I might be able to do it this way. focus in and then we can duplicate and bring that down, duplicate, bring it down, keep doing that until we get to the bottom. So yeah, that'll do. So kind of where we want it to be. So let's, in this case, let's, I think I'm kind of happy doing what I said before where we can duplicate and just kind of shift it down slightly like so, and then we can just rotate it around to about there, I think. Um, 
let's just go make sure. Actually, I can't really see. So, okay, anyway, you get it. So, that kind of looks good for what I want. Let's just scale this up slightly so you can't really see the white bits below. Okay. Now, the other thing that I've noticed as well is that on the tower, um, there are these kind of bricks that are sort of coming out slightly. Um, so at the moment, the tower I have here is quite exact. Um, so what we could do is just add a few cubes in there to make it look like it's um, not as sort of neat as it could be. So let's add a cube. And then we can just we can just position this any odd way. So let's just kind of uh, do this sort of thing. I'm not really being precise or um, you know exact with this. I think one of the one of the cool things that I like about Blender is that um, you can be quite free, and I think it can be quite forgiving to be a bit sort of ugly with what you're doing. Um, it's something that I think that, um, so the console players, the, the people who don't have PC, uh, the way that they build these bases is through something called glitch building, which I don't know a great deal about, but a lot of the sort of bases I see from glitch building, um, they're very sort of symmetrical and they're very precise. Um, and I think Blender kind of gives you the freedom to be a bit more, um, what's the word, a bit more forgiving or a bit more uh, lazy with um, the way that you do things. Uh, so yeah, let's just do that and let's just do another one on the other side just to... Okay, let's bring it down here, take it out. So the other thing as well, like talking about being lazy is that I've actually just duplicate the same thing and just copied it around and like I suppose we can kind of offset slightly just to kind of make it so it's not obvious that we've just copied it and moved it around um, but I think it can be quite forgiving like what you can do here okay okay I think that'll do so let's say we're happy with this, we can go through the same process of saving a preset. So in this case, we can go to the preset tab, save as a preset. Let's call this Lighthouse. Um, I'm not going to call it Lighthouse, Lighthouse, because that might be a bit stupid. So let's call it Lighthouse Tower. Cool. So again, we've saved this, um, you know, we don't it's not the end of the world if we go ahead and delete this because we can just click on edit and it will bring it back to how we had it. Um, now uh, we have about sort of seven minutes left so um, I'm going to finish this off by basically showing something cool with the presets. So let's do something new. So let's go to new scene and let's bring in both the hut that we made and the lighthouse that we made, the tower. So we click on the hut, click on the tower, then straight away we have them in our scene. Now, we can rotate this round so it's in relation, oh actually we need to rotate that one guy around as well, so let's do, um, nope, select this, let's bring it around 180 degrees. And then this guy, be minus 90 so you can see I'm kind of positioning this in relation to how I see it in the the picture but I think what you noticed or what you might have noticed is the size of the lighthouse is quite a lot bigger in relation to the hut than it is in the picture so um, what I might have shown you before with the presets is that you can actually scale the presets so it's not the end of the world, we don't have to go back and redo everything to a different scale. We can just grab the scale handle and we can just bring this down to be more in line with how it looks like in the picture. So I think 
probably about probably about there. There seems a bit more a bit more reasonable. So let's push that in. So the other th thing about Blender is that it doesn't really care about collisions. So um, when we get to actually bringing this into the game, uh, doing something like this is actually absolutely fine. So having things overlap is not a problem at all. So let's just kind of put it out slightly. Okay. So let's say uh, we're kind of happy with this positioning. Um, this is where um, these save options come in a bit handy. So um, what we can do is actually just save through Blender, uh, doing file save as, that's absolutely fine. Um, but doing the save this way allows us to kind of be a bit more procedural with the way that we're building these bases. So if we go ahead and save, and we're going to call this something a bit more called a global to what we're doing. So let's call this um, the lighthouse build. like that. So we've saved it under the des desktop. Um, so if we just, again, this kind of acts a little bit similar to the preset, so if we just blow everything away and then we just load that again. So under desktop, the lighthouse build, it's going to go ahead and repopulate that with the, what we had. But this saving mechanism knows about or has an awareness of how the presets are being built. So for example, let's say we have uh, these two presets. In this current state, we can't actually go in and edit because um, you know all we have are these two sort of handles, but we do have the presets available in the list. So we can actually just go ahead and edit something like, let's say we wanted to add, um, I don't know, some some decoration around the house. So let's go back to the house and we click on edit. And let's just start adding some some things around here. So let's go to the sort of, um, let's like add some lights or something. So let's just add a light over here. Stick it on the wall. And then just add a, um, let's go to the decoration area. Let's add like one of those blob statues. And let's add a, a geck as well. Actually, yeah, let's add a um, astronaut. So yeah, we got, now when I have a, an astronaut and a, and a blob thing sort of protecting the doorway, let's do another one of these over to the other side. So yeah, I'm just kind of doing stupid stuff here. So what we can do is basically save the preset again. If we save it as the same name, it's going to overwrite it. So let's do save as a preset. Lighthouse. Uh, this is the hut, so Lighthouse Hut. Making sure that you don't get confused with another name in case you overwrite it. So Lighthouse Hut, I think I've spelled that right. Oh no, uh, oh wait, uh, yes. I. I have, so let's do, okay. So now if we build the lighthouse hut, it's gonna capture that new information. So let's, so from this, we can go ahead and go back and load um, the lighthouse build that we saved previously. It's gonna detect that we've built it using a preset and it's gonna regenerate the preset for us. So that's quite useful if we have quite a large build and we're working on lots of different areas. Um, you could even you know, have a collaboration where someone else is working on one aspect and another person is working on another aspect. But you have this kind of central file where you bring in both of these things uh, and someone can basically be like the master builder and sort of position it where they want. Um, so we're coming up to an hour. I think I'm gonna kind of leave it there. Um, that goes through quite a few of the sort of key features of the building tool. Um, there's still the power stuff to go through. Um, and then after that, we'll um, actually get these things into No Man's Sky itself. So there'll be another, at least another video, maybe another two videos to go through that. Um, so yeah, hope you're having fun um, and see you in the next video.